Hi, this is Christopher Paolini, and I'm here at the 2013 San Diego Comic-Con. And I'm in the artist section of the hall, and this is where a lot of the fantasy artists, fantasy and science fiction artists are who directly inspired me when I was growing up. Um, you know, these are the men and women who did the covers of all those books I read, and that they you know, got me into reading and writing. And so it's a real treat to come here and hang out with some of them, talk with some of them, and, you know, uh, connect in the way that I think uh, lots of artists like to do. So I'm going to be walking around and talking with some of them, uh, including uh, Donato, who contributed to the 10th anniversary edition of Aragon. Uh, I'll also be talking with Brom, uh, who I named the character of Brom after. So it should be fun. Hope you enjoy it. And I'm here with Donato Gincola. Yes, who is an awesome artist, as you can see here. And you worked on the 10th anniversary edition of Aragon, right? Uh, that's correct, Christopher. It was a wonderful chance to work on your book and interpret this, that story. Yes. Thank you. And um, what was it that you actually painted? I mean, I know, but why don't you tell the viewers what, is, what the scene it is you worked on and how you went about doing it? Well, I took the, the ambush scene, uh, the first chapter, and wanted to show the, the flight of the elves, the, the tension between the, the elves and the earls, and uh, try to con contrast the darkness of their hiding space and that with the white of the elves, the good of the elves with the darkness of, uh, of, of you know, the enemy. So yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, it was nice. It was, and I love multiple figures. I love taking action sequences and uh, try to get cram as many people, many figures as possible to show the density and the complexities of those kind of environments. Now, was it an easy image to develop, or you know, did you know did any of the figures give you trouble or anything uh, like that? Well, it wasn't. It's um, it's never so easy because there's a lot of you know trying to be very specific to your words, trying to tap into the, what you've got in there, and yet finding a little bit of room to move around the camera eye around, find a way to really you know because it's it's one thing to distill to, to give you exactly what the words are but I'm trying to to portray the more the essence of that moment of that chapter so like the, the way the, uh, the elves are almost in flight you know actually if you look at the illustration you almost can't even see the ground so the elves and their horses are almost f flying of the Urgles. Yeah, I mean, I noticed you did some interesting things with the perspective with that, which gives it that sense of motion. That's right. So that's that's the challenge for me, is actually to find the way to communicate both the precision of your words and yet embellishing that with the essence of what I'm getting out of what, you know, the greater meaning of what you're trying to communicate. Well, and I thought you did a great job of capturing the mood of that scene, which that's the goal of any artist, I think, is if you're illustrating, is can you conjure up what it is that the words are doing? That's right. Yeah, and that's what I, I, I seek to do in almost all my illustrations. Now, you have the sketch here for the drawing, and we'll, we'll show that on camera in a little bit, but have you had anyone notice what it's for or talk about it? Well, it is. I do have it hidden back because it hasn't quite been released yes. yet <laughs> to the public. So I'm not trying to broadcast what this particular image is for. So it is, it is kind of hidden back there, and it is actually a very detailed drawing. Yeah. So it doesn't have, uh, you know, the... I'm not, I don't have it under the spotlights over here. So to be honest, you know, there's a couple people who, who yeah, definitely leaned in and taking, uh, taking notice of it. But I have it, uh, to, because I have it back, I'm, I'm keep, I am keeping it in hiding. Yeah. So it's a little incognito. That's right, it is. But it is here because I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of the image and, uh, and what it does. Now, maybe you can talk a little bit about your working, uh, the way you work, because I know you paint in oil, and you start with a preliminary sketch, and then you develop it from there? That's correct, yeah. So the, what, I, what you have behind me, and actually in that particular drawing uh, for that chapter, is a very precise, detailed study. And that's not even a study, that's actually a blueprint. It, lay, it lays the foundation of what I'm going to do in oils. And with that drawing then executed, I will then transfer that drawing onto a board or a panel and then uh, color by number. And how, how long does it take you to do a painting like that, or this painting in particular? Well, the drawing takes a couple days, and then the actual execution of the oil paints can actually vary drastically depending on how large the work is. And, and, so this, this one in particular, I spent about a week and a half to two weeks working on the oils. And did you need any reference for the drawings, or were you able to do it all out of your head? Oh, no, certainly a lot of reference. <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't. That's just, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, the scene comes out of my head. You know, the working with your words 
uh, working with your imagination, composing the, the dynam dynamics of the composition. So, but after that, after I work out that initial rough idea, then it takes another couple of days, uh, not, not a whole day, but a couple of days, you know, spread out over time of gathering. Okay, what's a horse look like when you're looking down from them? Right. It's easy to find a horse standing there, portrait, right? But like, wow, what does a horse look like when you're above on a high angle? So that takes quite a bit of research. And then uh, for the Urgles, I didn't have, I actually got myself, uh, I pulled out a bow and, uh, <laughs> and you know, set myself up in the studio and, and took some shots of myself and, and uh, my assistant as well for some of the riders for the elves. Oh, very cool. Well, I, I think it's a beautiful piece, and I was honored to have you work on the 10th anniversary edition. And hopefully, um, you know, you'll be able to work on the 10th anniversary edition of Eldest when we get around to that. Well, certainly, count me in on that. Yeah, it was a real pleasure to work on your work. Great. Well, thank you. And um, if you ever guys get a chance, uh, you can check out Donato's work on his website. It'll be linked below. And I hope you like his painting for Aragon as much as I do. Hi, this is Christopher Paolini, uh, and we're here at the 2013 uh, San Diego Comic-Con, which is insane and amazing as usual. And I'm here with the one and only Todd Lockwood. How are you doing, Todd? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Comic-Con, this is a blast. Glad to hear it. For those of you who don't know, Todd paints some of the best dragons and fantasy stuff in the industry. Uh, how long have you been painting fantasy? Uh, professionally, Mm, 18 or 19 years, but in in whole, uh, 54 years <laughs> since I was two. <laughs> and what is it to you? I, I want to concentrate on dragons here, since um, that's something I'm intimately familiar with and love. What is it to you that makes a good dragon painting? Uh, well, a dragon, whatever it is, the king of beasts has dragons have in spades. They have to be ferocious, but intelligent, um, massive, threatening, but regal, all of that. I like that. In fact, I, in my uh, second books, book, I have a giant gold dragon. And I remember after I wrote the descriptions of him, I saw your paintings, uh, the Scaramouche paintings yeah. and stuff, and I said, that's it. That's what he looks like. And what inspired those? Uh, paycheck. Paycheck. Those were book covers. In fact, the Scaramouche was my first cover for, or second cover for Tor Books. And uh, they just let me paint people flying on a dragon. You can't have too much more fun than that. Yeah, I think I saw that in the Spectrum books. It was like, I think the year it came out. One of them, one of them. It's, it's been a few years. Am I, am I mixing, mixing up my paintings? No, I'm pretty sure I saw that in Spectrum at some point. Yes, yeah, I mean, it was, it was for, I mean, it wasn't for Spectrum. They said it was published. It was for Tor. Oh, oh, oh. I wonder. I wonder if that was before I caught on to Spectrum. I wasn't oh. the first couple. <laughs> Spectrum's where I learned about your work and uh, many others. In fact, I think a lot of people don't know you do some pretty amazing black and white pencil art along with your painting as well. Uh, I do pen and ink as well. I've got uh, tons of stuff. Um, it's all of the family, I suppose. And with your, with your color paintings, are you doing mostly oil or digital now, or acrylic? It's been mostly di uh, digital for about a, a decade, actually. But I painted in oils before that, and I'm working back towards doing more oil paintings again, because I miss having paintings. When you're painting digital, do you work in Photoshop or some other program? Uh, Corel Painter. It acts more like natural media. And at the time I made the switch, that was the program that worked. Photoshop wasn't, I needed something that would let me paint the way I painted and give me a, a final product that looked like my oil paintings. And I couldn't have done that in Photoshop 12 years ago. So it was Painter. Actually Painter, I started seeing photos, uh, paintings done in Painter coming into the offices at Widget of the Coast that looked like oil paintings. And uh, it, they just scared me. <laughs> I knew there was another sea change coming in the industry like after Photoshop hit. So I learned it and I was determined not to be caught behind the wave. 
So I know it depends on you know the image and what's in the image, but uh, roughly how long does it take you for a lot of the paintings you do? It varies wildly. Sometimes if the painting cooperates, I can get them done in a couple of, of days. Um, other paintings, if they're very complicated, can take a month. So it really depends. Well, and this is rather technical, but I know that you uh, you pay close attention to the um, the perspective that you're using as well, and you'll tweak that to get the right um, the right effects. I remember that post you wrote on mu muddy colors about the moon and the linear perspective. Yes. Yeah, it made my head hurt. It, it, it you know what? It made my head happy because um, curvilinear perspective is something that I love. I mean, I see it everywhere, but. That was a puzzle that I had to think about all the way home. Would, would you do, would you, you have to look it up if you don't know what we're talking about on, on muddy colors, go into the archives or use my name as the search function and read this bit. It, it was cool. <laughs> Very cool. Well, it's that sort of it's that sort of behind the scenes work I think that ends up making you know a painting or even a book or any sort of creative thing more believable in some ways or more gripping? Yeah, the research that you do. Now, if you're going to write about something, you want to be sure you know all about it. If you're going to paint something well, you need to understand how it's built and why it looks the way it does. Thus your uh, dragon anatomy chart. Yeah, right there. I had to know how it worked. <laughs> and I actually have the full-size print of that back at home. Yes, got it last Comic-Con, I think. Okay, all right. Well, this has been a real pleasure. Um, I hope uh, fans everywhere of fantasy have enjoy enjoyed this, and I'm sure we'll see each other around and hopefully next Comic-Con. Yep. Hope and so. hopefully you'll get a chance to paint uh, some of the dragons of the inheritance cycle at some point. Yeah, that would be fun. Same here. All right. All right, thank you. Hi, this is Christopher Paolini, and I'm here at the 2013 San Diego Comic-Con with the one and only Brom. Now, we have kind of an odd history together since uh, I, as, as many of the fans may know, um, you know, I saw your work originally in the Spectrum books, I believe, and then I ended up naming the character of Brom after you in the Inheritance Cycle because I liked your work so much. Um, so how did you get started in art and, and end up in the Spectrum book? Um, you know, I've, I've been doing art as, as long, as far back as I can remember, and uh, pretty much the very same thing that I'm doing today. I've always been drawing monsters and, and drawn to the aesthetic of the darker side of things. Um, I feel like I've always been telling stories uh, with pictures and with words. When I was a kid, uh, I would draw, I'd make books out of staplers and paper. I'd draw the pictures and write the stories. And it's really interesting to this day I'm doing the same thing uh, in my room. I paint the pictures and I write the books and put it all together in the computer. So it's, uh, it's just been one path that's kind of made a full circle, I guess. Well, and you've now transitioned to becoming an author as well as an artist. Could you talk about that a little bit? Um, I, I think it's similar to what I just touched on. I, I feel like uh, I wasn't just drawing a static moment. Uh, whenever I created a, a character, I was interested in what happened before and after the scene. Uh, and the pictures captured that moment, but I wanted it to go further. I wanted to bring these characters to life. So um, at a... Uh, at the age of about 30, I had pretty much got my illustration career established, and I was a little bit frustrated because I wasn't getting to, to draw and paint exactly what I wanted to, and I thought the best path to do that would be to uh, start writing my own stories. And it started out just trying to create like a short story, something to wrap illustrations around, but the writer bug bit me, and I fell in love with it as that obsessive learning curve. And uh, here I am four novels later starting my fifth novel. Um, so, yeah. I like that phrase, the obsessive bit getting you. That's that's a. I think that's a good description for the drive you have to have for any kind of art, whether it's painting or writing. Um, it doesn't happen by accident. Oh. No, and it's um, and, and yeah, obsessive is the right word, and mental illness might be the right word as well. Uh, I, I tell people I spend um, far too much time in my room by myself, uh, but. I also have to say I'm very happy there. I, I, I really get in my own world, and when I'm writing a book or doing a painting, I feel like I'm, I'm acting all the parts. It's, it's almost like making my own movie and, and getting to play all the characters. 
Yeah, I often joke that I'm an introvert who can fake extroversion. Um, because there is, there's something about being alone by yourself and creating something that um, I think very few things cre give you the same sort of satisfaction. It's, it's very true. Uh, yeah, I don't, I just have to agree with that statement. Uh, so now, now what's new for you? I, you, have a, you have an art book here out at uh, Comic-Con, and your last novel was Krampus, which I would describe as uh, Santa Claus meets Stephen King, uh, uh, with some awesome paintings in it, which was uh, really, really neat. Um, but in, moving forward in the future? Yeah, um, I have uh, another novel I've just begun, and I, I can't reveal too much at this time, but just to say that it is another venture into the dark side. Uh, this one's a little more geared towards the illustration side. I, I want to sort of create a world that I can uh, do a bunch of paintings in, and I hope to uh, also do a, an art book of paintings to go along with it. So maybe this one's going to be a, a, a heavy prose novel with an accompanying art book. Now, one of the things that drew me to your art in the first place was, I mean, it was a couple of things. I mean, you, it's your use of color. Um, you have often a fairly limited palette, which appeals to me. Um, you have a lot of very strong mythical elements in your work. And uh, I think you also have, you have, you're not afraid of strong women, which um, I think some illustrators are. It's, it's, it seems to me that sometimes illustrators will portray women in a sexual manner but not in a strong manner. Even though the woman is carrying a sword, she's just a pinup babe, whereas you go in a slightly different direction. Um, you know, I feel like whether it's a woman, whether it's a man, whether it's a monster creature, I am often portraying something as if I were acting that character. So possibly that's what you're seeing. If, if I was role-playing and I got to be a woman, I would want to be this type of woman. If I was a monster, I'd want to be this type of monster. So there's often, even in the creatures, there's a certain beauty and aesthetic and nobleness to them that I try to get in there. And uh, and I believe that comes through with my female uh, characters as well. So they're, they're less props, they're less supporting characters, and they're, they're much more lead characters, maybe is the way to put it. Um. Now you you also do some very grotesque stuff as well, uh, which can be lots of fun as well. Actually, now that I think about it, the first painting of yours that I saw was not Spectrum. It was the cover for Doom 2, oh, yes. which uh, anyone from the who grew up in the 90s, I think, will remember that. How did you get that job? Um, it it really just came out of the blue. Um, my it was even before my art book came out, actually. So I am not sure how the the guys at ID tracked me down, but I got a phone call, and I remember my schedule was completely full. And they said, we'd like you to do the cover for this. And I was in the process of turning them down. And, 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 I, and it clicked, your doom. Um, it, it was a game I just got on the computer, and I loved it. And I was like, I have to do this. And I managed to squeeze it in. I didn't realize at the time you know, that it was going to be such a, for such an important game, such a you know, groundbreaking game. And I, I would like to have still own that original. But the original went to it, and apparently it became lost. So I would love to know where it ended up. Yeah. Well, maybe one of our viewers can uh, help us figure out where it went. Uh, you know, I, we were talking about this earlier with some of the other artists that, you know, there is a 10th anniversary edition of Aragon coming out this year that, uh, unfortunately, the scheduling didn't work out for you to provide a painting. But uh, hopefully in the future, um, with the second book or further down, we'll be able to get a painting by Brahm within the world of Allegasia. Yeah. I, I certainly hope so. I, I really regret I didn't get to participate. Um, the schedules just didn't line up. Uh, but I, I hope to be first in line for that. Yeah. Well, and I'm very much looking forward to your next novel. Um, probably, uh, I'll probably get to blurb it, I'm sure. And uh, is Comic-Con going well for you? Hey, Comic-Con's always a pleasure. I've as an artist or creative, you spend a lot of time by yourself in a room, and it's always rewarding to come to a show and get feedback to see that people do read and, and see what you paint and write. Um, and it, it, it revigorates you. It, it gets the creative juices going again. Um, yeah. Now, if I remember correctly on a technical note, you paint main, mostly in oils nowadays. Uh, and I know, I'm sure this depends on the painting, but how, about how long does it take you to do an average painting? Um, on average, uh, four, f about a week to a week and a half. I mean, if it's a simple painting, maybe three or four days. Uh, but if it's a complex uh, thing from the first sketch to the very last mark, uh, about a week and a half. And do you need much reference, or is it mostly out of your head these days? 
It all depends. Uh, the most enjoyable ones are the ones I paint out of my head, uh, and that's usually the creatures and exaggerated type stuff. If it's more classic little realism, uh, the female anatomy, which is very challenging to me, uh, I like to have as much reference as I can come across. Makes sense. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Uh, it was a pleasure as always, and I'm sure I'll see you next year at Comic-Con. So. Hey, thanks thank so much. You. All right. Take care.